With the Somerset expansion just released for The Elder Scrolls Online, I thought I would give the base game a chance to see if it's anything I'd like. My initial impression upon seeing the game made me think of Skyrim. I loved Skyrim. Yes, Bethesda reissued it about 500 times. Yes, I wish they fixed all the glitches by now. But still, Skyrim was one of the most ambitious RPGs ever made. So, take the Skyrim model and expand it to all of Tamriel? Hell yeah! Initially, I wanted to make this video about creating The Rock, and my frustration over every character Dwayne Johnson has played being taken except for... Davis Oyoki? Really? Did, did anyone know that his character name in Rampage was Davis Aoki? I, I haven't seen it yet, but that name alone makes the price of admission worthwhile. Anyway. However, the problem is, ESO makes some notable changes to the Skyrim formula and not for the better. And since people like lists, here are five reasons Elder Scrolls Online is not Skyrim with your friends. I was going to get a call back to that game no matter what. Number 1. Character Classes Because Bethesda wants to encourage you to play multiple times, they gave you classes to choose at the start. It won't bother you much if you know how you want to play the game, but one of the great things about Elder Scrolls games is that they leave you a relative blank slate at the start. You do things and get better at those things. You end up sneaking a lot, well, you'll be better at sneaking. Thus, you might start gearing your character towards stealth. It lets your class evolve as your character does, almost as if it's allowing for role-playing. Hmm... They did keep a natural leveling system, but your base skill trees are determined at the start. Well, I guess you can purchase additional character slots if you wanted to try out everything. Huh, go figure. Wait, is that John Cleese with a pot on his head? Oh dear, well that is inconvenient, isn't it? Tell you what, I happen to know another way in. Yeah, apparently. Number two, carrying capacity. So Elder Scrolls Online uses an item limit that can be upgraded with levels, unlike Skyrim, which uses weight. Thus, a great sword is equatable to a flower, at least in terms of what you can carry. However, you can have a stack of flowers. You can't have a stack of great swords, so I guess. Sometimes this system works, but it's never been used in Elder Scrolls, so it feels weird to add it here. You can hold items over your carry limit, like those other games, but get encumbered in similar ways. This system was likely installed for streamlining because it's an MMO, but that leads us to the next item. Number three, the MMO immersion problem. This is not really ESO's fault. This is a problem with the nature of massively multiplayer online RPGs. Although Bethesda did try, even though there are dialogue options, it's basically irrelevant because they all lead you to doing the same quest. This means there is lack of decision making, a cornerstone of other Elder Scrolls games. That might have something to do with everyone else who is playing as well. You keep stumbling into squads of other heroes, running around the same world, completing quests you either need to go on or have already been through. It's sort of like everyone is working on knocking things off their RPG checklist, seeing who can do all the things first. It's not the hero's journey, it's the everyman's journey. I like role-playing games where they let you experience your own story. Having everyone in the game makes it more of a collective story and it loses something for the individual player experience. Even major events that change the balance of power feel hollow. Like for instance, the Imperials had taken over this one town and after defeating their captain, the townspeople rejoiced. You're welcome townspeople. However, the town still had guards all over, they were just rebels now and non-hostile. Also, I could finally visit the shops that were on the map, so I guess that was a bonus. But I realized other players must be seeing a bunch of hostile guards right now because they haven't completed the quest. There were even times I was disguised as a guard and walked by other players who were actively fighting a battle. You can almost feel the silent judging of those players saying, Hey, a little help here, please, sneaky McSneaker face. Good thing I didn't care. Number four, dynamic enemy levels. In Skyrim, enemy levels were whatever they were. Run out into the wilds first thing and try slaying a giant. You dead. 
You rose in power throughout the game, but everything else already had a place in the pecking order. This was great, because you really felt like you were making progress. Not so in ESO. It takes the Oblivion model of making enemies whatever level you, or the average level of players in the area, are. So feel free to take on Daedra first thing out, or get ready to run afoul of supercharged skeletons later in the game. It doesn't make sense for a game world to slap some ebony armor on a bandit because you're level 20 now instead of level 5. I mean, it's not as obvious in ESO, but that does happen. It's also really annoying when a fight that seemed easy enough before suddenly gets way harder because a level 9000 stepped into frame. At least that's what I'm blaming it on. No, Mom, it's not that I didn't catch the rat. It's just that Superman flew by and the rat suddenly gained psionic powers for five seconds. I'm lucky to just be alive. What do you mean I'm lying? And number five, nothing is permanent. Tamriel lacks permanence. NPCs respawn, and so do you. If you commit a crime, there's a countdown timer. When the timer expires, all your crimes are forgiven. Yep, just like that. The guards have very short memories. It never feels like what you're doing matters. Unique monsters will reappear and items will respawn in chests and drawers. Generally, everything in the world feels like it's on a cycle. I get that this is an online game and it has to be all things to all people, but that's the problem. When your actions have no long-term consequences, like they do in other Bethesda games, there is no player agency. It's just running around a big open world looking for things to hit and stuff to steal. And mostly what I want to do is hit snakes. Get, take that, take that snake. You're gonna die now. Whew. Don't like snakes. And I mean, I guess all of this is fun enough, and games are supposed to be fun, but... Higher standards, people. This is Bethesda we're talking about. But no worries. On the next Attempting to Play, we see what happens when you make a single-player RPG that takes place in an MMO. So, maybe that works better? Hey, how are you? <laughs> I don't even know what to do with this. I... I can understand you! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're seeing Squirrel there for a minute. I think we got lost no. in translation. Follow me. I'll show <laughs> sure, you. sure, Squirrel Girl, lead the way.